You said you were a non-believer? Yeah, Mike said that I was to talk to you and tell you my wonderful story because you're a non-believer. Correct. Well, I was married to a very controlling man. And later on in the marriage, he became very seriously controlling. And he believed that women should be like the women in the Bible, very subservient to a man, and get permission from him before you did anything, bought anything, spent any money, like that. I could not take my son to the park with the other mothers because he said that there were too many women. And uh, when our son was five, he quit his job because he said his job was to make me perfect. So that's when the um, criticism really started, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, after five years, that'll kind of get you down. And I thought after the five years that I was the most horrible person in the world and every day I had to fight go into the back of the walk-in closet and sit because I thought that's where I belonged so then one day I thought after that urge I thought wait a minute I am a redeemed child of God I don't have to put up with this so I began to listen to teaching ministries on the radio, and yes, some were women, and I ordered their materials and listened to them just constantly when I was working around the house, and I began singing songs of praise just constantly because that feeds your spirit. And let's see, I don't know what that word says. <laughs> <laughs> but my countenance must have changed because he would often say, Well, what are you so happy about? Well, I couldn't tell him that I was becoming a very spiritual person and I was redeemed and I was happy I was full of joy and I I started going to church until one day he physically stopped me when I was going out the door and he said it was just as wrong for me to go to a honky-tonk as it was for me to go to church without him well when have I ever been to a honky-tonk I learned who I was in Christ, how God saw me through his eyes instead of my ex-husband's, you know, evil, confused eyes. And it was very uplifting. And I began to substitute my weakness for Christ's strength and my fear for his boldness. And... Um, after the divorce, well, you asked, why didn't you divorce him? Because I couldn't, because he was so against women that he would have taken our child to the woods of Northern California, and I would never see him again. So I was determined to sacrifice my happiness for the sake of our son. And it's so funny, he, my ex-husband tried to uh, constantly make our son just like him, but surprise, he was, turned out to be just like me in my personality, and he will not have a thing to do with his dad because he's so mad at the way his dad um, treated me. So I continue to grow, and I'll never stop growing spiritually. And your group helps on Tuesday night, and it's wonderful to be able to be who I was created to be. It's just wonderful. So I'm still the kind, patient Miriam, but don't mess with me because I'm, 
I am bold and brave. So right after the divorce at the courthouse, he came up to me and said, well, I hope you get the mental health that you need. Well, I did from the living word. So from deep, dark despair, what do you think of me now? Okay, hi. I'm going to try to do this without crying. <laughs> okay. So I used to live in a prison of secrets. I lived in a prison of not feeling good enough no matter what I did. I was chained to who I used to be, the things I did, the facts I hid. I was chained to what people once did to me, the memories of being mistreated, the power of what was said to me. I was chained to what people expected of me, expectations that I couldn't shake, that every day used to steal a piece of me. I was chained to my own sins, feeling like I knew what I wanted to do, what was right, but I still just did the opposite. I've been controlled by my desires and lived a life of hypocrisy. I've obeyed my flesh in the name of proving no one else was in charge of me. And I've lived in prison most years I've been living because I never truly got what Jesus did for me. I did not get that he did not come to restrict me. I did not get that he did not come as a police officer throwing a set of rules at me. I did not get that he did not come to condemn me. But rather, because of sin, I was condemned already. On August 11th, 2022, after my Celebrate Recovery small group, I stopped Pastor Mike and I told him I wanted to say the sinner's prayer. Right then, right now, I couldn't take it anymore. He held my hands and he prayed with me and I felt the shackles released from my hands and feet. Until that moment, I did not get that Jesus coming, dying, being buried, and rising now changes everything. For though I had been chained to so many things, but other than used to being a slave, Jesus said, that's unnecessary. I'm creating a new way. I came, died, and rose to life so you could accept you too can resurrect. And you can have a new life in me. So Jesus came to be a friend to give his life to set my life free. My chains are who I was. They're not who I'm supposed to be. Roman 8 states clearly that if we are in Christ, then our bodies are dead because of sin, but our spirit is alive, for we have been made right with God. The same spirit of the one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead is now living in us. So the name, so the same God that Christ, that wrote, sorry, for the same God that raised Christ from the dead will give life to our bodies. He will set us free from the chains of sin. He will set us free from the pains of our past. He will set us free from who we were and give us a new life. Because if God is not enough to raise us from the dead, if he's not enough to save us from our lives of sin, if he's not enough to redeem us from all the places we've been, they couldn't have been enough to resurrect Christ. Since the tomb is empty and no savior bones are lying in the graveyard, I can now know and rest assured death has long been conquered. So as I let those chains fall to the floor that day, may the metal of my shackles echo loudly around the world. I was once a slave, but I'm bound no more. I was once dead, but I'm under sin no more. I am alive. I am free. I am a child of the King, and I belong to the Lord. So, whatever you are chained to, Christ has come to set you free from whatever pieces of the past you hold tight to. There is a Savior who paid your debt, 
so you can let those memories be whatever you used to be defined by. The Son of God has come to speak truth to those lies, and I know all this to be right because he did that all for me. Morning, everybody. I hope y'all can stand a few more minutes of me. But like some of y'all, I, I grew up in the church. Uh, you know, I publicly professed my faith and acceptance of Jesus as my Lord and Savior and was baptized when I was a kid in elementary school. And Brad, we might have even went to the I went to Woodlawn. Where did you go to elementary school? Okay. So we go a little ways back. My walk had begun, but it was baby steps, trust me. My family regularly attended church, but that was primarily because my mama sang in the choir. And I imagine that's the way Eric used to feel, or maybe he still feels that way, I don't know. But I was primarily there to see my friends in Sunday school and and then struggled but failed to behave during the church service. I, didn't, I don't know if, if fire and brimstone was all that old Baptist preacher talked about, but I do know, more vividly remember hearing about the wages of sin more than the celebration of God's love and amazing grace. And they are both unbelievably significant. Uh, as I got older, uh, I knew God loved me, but school and sports and music and girls were where my heart was. And when I went out on my own, I went away from the church. And you can probably imagine how being a musician for a living until I was in my late 30s affected my walk. My journey had turned into walking in place, or really more truthfully, in walking in the wrong direction. But, but God was still with me, and he cared about me. I knew that because of this nasty little thing called a conscience that he gave me. That's what kept me within the most extreme boundaries. But because of that immature relationship with God, it also served to make me feel guilty about the way I was living. And uh, I thank the Lord every day that change is gone. There's no, no guilt in this world. God threw away the rearview mirror. Well, uh, you think you know about love, you love your parents. You love your family and friends, and you love your spouse or significant other. But everything changed for me when our babies, little Eric and Chad, were born. I never knew that you could love anything or anyone that much. So God grabbed me and said, now do you know what love is? Now do you have an idea how much I love you? I love you so much that I gave my only son for you. That encounter with God changed my everything. And I thank you for letting me share my part of the story with you today. <laughs> 